Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at energy changes in particles. This is part of the new topic on energy. What we're going to look at today is how particles are arranged, how the uh, particles change during a changing of state. So you should be uh, familiar with things like evaporation, but we're going to look at how the particles move and how they move differently when they go from a solid to a liquid, for example, and how heat affects particles as a substance changes state. So if you just want to get those uh, learning objectives down on your sheet or wherever you're taking your notes ready for in a minute. Okay, before we get delving into new information about what happens in terms of energy when things change state, it's important for us to go back to basics and just see if we can remember what the particles look like in a solid, liquid and gas. So I challenge you now to just pause the video, draw yourself three boxes like I'm doing on the screen. One for solid, one for liquid, Ugh. Uh, one for gas, and then just inside, using circles as we always do, don't make them too small because you'll be there until the uh, end of time. Just <clears throat> show me what you think uh, the particles look like in a solid, liquid and gas. Pause the video, don't cheat. Okay, if you look at what I'm doing now, this is no by, you know, by far not a perfect example, but as long as you have the bits I'm describing, you should be fine. So in a solid, your particles are arranged in rows. They're all touching. You don't have to fill up the whole box. Arranged in rows, all touching. There is no room, you know, no space for movement. So that's why when you touch a table, your hand doesn't go through because the particles have nowhere to go and they push against you. Now the particles aren't staying still either. Lots of people think just because particles are in a solid, you know, a table is solid, it's not moving on its own. The particles, remember, are vibrating very gently. If you remember the little dance we did, solid, liquid. So that's a solid. In a liquid, you have particles mostly touching, but they aren't arranged in rows. The particles are free to move around. Uh, there's lots of overlapping. And again, the biggest mistake people make is drawing this sort of liquid in the middle, like it's floating. If you're on the, drinking a bottle of water on the International Space Station in zero gravity, probably would float around in the middle, but because on Earth uh, we have gravity, you need to put them at the bottom. With a gas, <clears throat> particles are really spaced far apart, like we are all doing hopefully now with social distancing. The particles have lots of energy, so these little um, squigglies just show that those particles are zipping around everywhere. They can come into contact, but they take up the space of the container. Okay, if we start introducing energy into this then, we need to look at what happens when a solid goes from a solid, uh, when substance goes from a solid to a liquid, when a substance goes from a liquid to a gas and backwards. So what we're going to do first is write changes of state this way in one colour, changes of state this way in another colour, and then talk through roughly what's happening with the particles. So let's start with solids. When solids become a liquid, we call this melting. Easiest one to, you know, example to remember is, you know, a lump of ice turning into water. If you're going from a liquid to a gas, this is called evaporation. That's if it happens gradually. Think uh, a puddle on a hot day. And you've got boiling, where this happens rapidly, so that's a pot of water on your stove or your kettle. If we're going the other way, going from a gas to a liquid is condensation. If you're going from a liquid to a solid, that's freezing. With condensation, think of, you know, a foggy mirror after a bath or a shower, or, you know, blowing on a, well not blowing, breathing on a mirror, uh, or a window on a cold day. For freezing, just think of the other way around, rather than ice turning into water, water turning into ice. <clears throat> okay, what we've got to do now is start talking about what happens in terms of energy. So to do that, I'm going to have to introduce you to one of my favourite snacks. So just bear with me a second while I clear up. Okay. 
Okay. To really get our head around what happens happening with particles in terms of adding energy in the form of heat, I'm gonna introduce you to one of my favorite snacks, cheese balls. Now, cheese balls, best thing about them is they are spherical, so you can use them to model particles. So if I fill up my baking tray with some cheesy cheese balls, and sort of put them all to one side, we can, you know, it's not perfect, but you can see that my cheese balls are sort of modeling what the particles will look like in a solid. What happens when you start heating up a substance? So if you're going from a solid, as our cheese balls are now, to a liquid, what's gonna happen is, say you've got an ice cube, as that ice cube is put somewhere warm, those particles are going to start gaining more energy so that you're gonna have a heat transfer turning into a kinetic store. So if I use my hands to simulate adding some energy in, you can see that the cheese balls are no longer in rows, but then, you know, they are free to move around. So they're acting much more like a liquid. So we've got solid to start with. They are vibrating gently, add some more energy in and they start to move around. If I had many layers or if I was really going for it, you would see that the cheese balls could move over one another. So they, you know, they can be poured like a liquid would. So if you think about energy, when you've got a solid, we've got the particles in rows. As you start to add heat, remember we're talking about stores and transfers in terms of energy. So this is a heat transfer. Uh, and you're adding heat, what's going to happen is those particles are going to vibrate more. The bonds in those particles, so the forces that are holding those solids in those rows are going to start to break because they're being jostled around so much that they just can't hold together anymore. And that ultimately leads the uh, substance to melt. For those particles, because they're not in rows anymore, they are free to move around. This brings the overall energy in this substance up, you'd think, because the particles are, you know, not staying still anymore. Any energy that's stored in them might be starting to go down, but it's the opposite. Because you are transferring, energy into this kinetic store. The kinetic store is going up. So this one has more energy. Okay, so that's solid to liquid. We've got our cheese balls back and we're gonna look at liquid to gas now. You've got your liquid. Particles are moving fairly freely. When you go from a liquid to a gas, you're gonna increase the energy, you're gonna transfer more heat into that kinetic store. So the particles are going to start to have enough energy to escape the container they're in. And then you make a great big mess. But you can see the particles, some of them had enough energy transferred into them that they could break away from those bonds in the water molecules and then evaporate as a gas. If I was to simulate boiling, I'd have to really throw these cheese balls everywhere and that would make my partner sad because he has to clean up after me sometimes. So, if you can see through my cheese bally mess, we've got solid to liquid, heat's being transferred, the heat's going up, we've got more vibrations, bonds between the particles are breaking, this has more energy. So you could probably guess if we're adding more energy in and making a gas, we're gonna have a, another heat transfer. So you're gonna have even more kinetic energy. That store gets bigger. And some particles, not all of them at once, have enough energy to fully break those bonds that are holding those particles together. Uh, 
and they escape in a cheesy mess. Okay, that's it for content from me. What you're gonna see now is a set of questions for you to try. Just have a go on some paper. You can either take a picture and upload it to the Google Classroom or you can just do the quiz. I'd rather you did the quiz on Google Classroom as well as your own notes because that's how I can check that you've actually done the topics for today and watched this video. Use the video to review every now and again to sort of keep that information fresh for when we get back to normal. And I will see you next time. I usually have you and have a good day. Extracurricular work for today is to reach out to someone that you think is feeling a bit isolated at the moment and just check in and see if they're okay. See you next time.